All right, so we're going to look at some examples of gravimetric analysis. Yes, we're doing a lab involving this, but also I just want to make sure uh, there's a couple different ways you can be presented with these problems. But remember, gravimetric analysis is going to involve a precipitate. All right, so you know, in the lab, I can't just hand you a precipitate and say analyze it, you know, because you need to know some information. You need to know some information about the solutions that were put together to make this precipitate. All right, maybe you know the molarity, maybe you know the mass of solute and volume of this of water, maybe you know some ion charges, but you're going to know something. And so here we have a very classic question. Um, again, this is a, a potential AP multiple choice problem. There will be math involved, but it's nothing you can't really handle without a calculator. So we've got an unknown metal cation, and this cation has a plus one charge. So we're going to abbreviate this M plus. The bromide of the unknown metal, MBR, is dissolved in enough water to make 100 mils of solution. Okay, that is in fact the formula of the metal bromide, MBR, since bromide is minus one, and we know that the cation is plus one, that is the actual formula. So this solution is then mixed with an excess of silver nitrate to precipitate silver bromide, and they give us the molar mass. Then, like we did in lab, the precipitate is collected by filtration, dried, and this is the following data. So I know how much of the metal bromide was put into the wa water to make that 100 mils of solution. And then I know my empty filter paper mass and the mass of my filter paper and precipitate. So just like we did in lab, you get your filter paper with the precipitate and it's dried and you find its mass. And then the very first thing you do is you go ahead and subtract the measurements there so you can find out exactly how much of your precipitate you made. So my 2.86, which is filter paper and precipitate, minus my filter paper. So that is 1.88 grams of my silver bromide. Nice to know not as helpful as let's say moles because with moles then we can start looking at formulas and mole ratios and all that lovely stuff that we would like to and so we have our molar mass given to us in the problem 188 grams per mole and that's where you first realize oh that's some nice math since it's 1.88 grams when I dissolve, dissolve sorry <laughs> divide by 188 grams per mole, it's a factor of 100, so it's 0.01 moles. If I had 188 grams of precipitate, it would be 1 mole. If I had 18.8 .8 grams, it would be 0.1. But here I have 1.88, so it's 0.01 mole. Alright, so this precipitate, where did it come from? Alright, well it came from adding excess silver nitrate, so that's where the silver came from, and the bromide all came from my unknown metal, my MBR. And so we want to somehow get back to there. So when I see this, I, uh, yes, we found out that we have 0 0.01 moles of silver bromide, my precipitate. But what else does that tell me? Okay, well since it's a plus one minus one one to one mole ratio compound that also tells me that there's 0.01 moles of silver ions and there's 0.01 moles here, let me, 0.01 moles of silver ions there's also 0.01 moles of bromide ions and that's potentially helpful because where did all those bromides come from they came from the MBR the, the metal bromide so, since that is also a 1 to 1 mole ratio, ultimately that 0.01 moles is very helpful. That tells me I have 0.01 moles of the silver bromide, bromide, and the metal bromide. And so I see that this is a multiple choice question, so I have to identify that metal. Is it potassium bromide, nickel bromide, lithium bromide, or sodium bromide? So what do they all have different and unique? Their molar masses, of course. So I can look at their molar masses, and then somehow I can hopefully try to link up the fact that I know how many moles of my metal bromide I have. Ding, 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 ding. We also know grams. 
molar mass is grams per mole. So if I simply take the 1.38 grams divided by the 0.01 moles, that tells me that my metal bromide is 138 grams per mole, which is very, very similar to the nickel bromide, which is why I'm going to choose that answer. Pretty fun, huh? All right, let's look at one more example. This one is very similar to one of our post-lab questions for our gravimetric analysis lab, but it says I have a 10.5 gram mixture containing calcium nitrate and potassium chloride. Are those soluble in water? You bet your bippy, because all nitrate and all potassium compounds are soluble in water. AP wants us to know that. So this mixture, a nice solution of ions swimming around, I'm going to add excess lead to nitrate solution. Is that soluble? You bet your bippy. Another nitrate. <laughs> Sorry, I'm being goofy. And when this is added, we precipitate some lead to chloride, specifically 4.227 grams of it. So the question asks me, what is the percent by mass of potassium chloride in the mixture? So again, it wants the percent by mass of potassium chloride. So I'm going to have to get the mass of potassium chloride. And then I'm going to have to compare it to the overall mass that was given to me, the 10.5 gram mixture. So that is my mission. So again, where does my precipitate come from? The precipitate is lead to chloride. And so the lead portion is coming from the lead to nitrate, which of course was in excess. So so that, that's not as important as the chloride. The chloride part is important. Oh, I'm doing horrible with lines, sorry. All of that chloride came from where? Potassium chloride. And that is what I'm trying to find out the percent mass of. All right, so let's analyze our precipitate. Lead 2 chloride has a molar mass of 278.2. Lead 2 chloride everywhere on our planet has the same percent of chloride and lead in it. And since chloride is what's linking me to the potassium chloride, let's look at that. The percent chloride in lead 2 chloride is 25.5%. So what that means is 25.5% of my precipitate, the 4.227 grams, is chloride. And again, where did all that chloride come from in the precipitate? From the potassium chloride we're trying to find out about. So since it all came from that, let's analyze potassium chloride a little bit. Potassium chloride, molar mass, 74.6. It also has a percent chloride that all potassium chloride has. It is 47.6%. And so now, put your thinking caps on, think, 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 pause the video if you'd like, try to figure out a link between those two pieces of information. Again, all of my chloride in my precipitate, which is 1.078 grams, came from the potassium chloride. And that potassium chloride has a percent chloride of 47.6. Did you find the link? All right, what the link is, However much potassium chloride I have, which is what I'm trying to find, the mass of potassium chloride, whatever it is, 47.6% of it is chloride. And 47.6% of it is going to equal my 1.078 grams. So whatever mass of potassium chloride I have, call it X, 47.6% of it is going to equal 1.078 grams. So when I solve for x, that means there was 2.265 grams of potassium chloride in the mixture. That's how much potassium chloride would give me 1.078 grams of chloride. And so that is my answer. All right, But again, they want the percent by mass in the mixture. So I ultimately have to say, OK, the 2.265 divided by my mixture, which was 10.5 times 100, of course, 
21.6%. Now as a reward for solving that extremely challenging question, figure out part B. What is the percent by mass of calcium nitrate in the mixture? Okay, it was a mixture of calcium nitrate and potassium chloride, two things, and it equaled 10.5 grams. So if I know the percent of one of the things, I just subtract from 100, and I know that the calcium nitrate is 78.4%. All right, I hope this helps you with gravimetric analysis, and I'll see you soon.